early peace and hope in their lives by walking out God's plan for their lives. Now, John wants to help you find the passion, vision, and faith you need to start writing out God's sentence for your life and help you add to it every day. Full lines are now open. Call or text 314-88. Now, here is your host, the new John Simmons. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer, we are free from sin forevermore, oh how sweet the sound. Hey everybody, welcome, it's the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network where we talk about finding passion, vision, and faith in your walk with Christ so that your life can overflow with joy, peace, and hope today. Welcome to the broadcast everybody, if you're with us. On Facebook Live, the live stream, it's had a little bit of difficulties, but uh, we're going to press on here and believe that things are going to turn out okay. Uh, we've been gone for quite a while. Uh, the sickness hit the family. Our poor boy, our poor son had to spend the, his birthday in the emergency room, and then he just passed it on to everybody else in the house. We've been sick all week, uh, so that's why you've heard some of the best of shows over the last week or so, but we're moving on here. It's the beginning of the week. It's February 13th, almost Valentine's Day. Very excited about celebrating uh, that holiday with my wife. It gets harder, it seems like, at least in my life and with my family and my marriage, uh, to celebrate with the kids around and finding babysitters and doing all that stuff. That stuff I never had to worry about as a single guy. Uh, usually didn't have to worry about buying any gifts at all. And then if you were dating, you could just go out for Valentine's Day. So a lot of changes going on since the kids have come out. It's been an exciting change, though. We've been able to... Uh, celebrate all sorts of holidays a little bit differently. And it's just been such an exciting uh, season in my life. So I'm just sharing my heart with you guys, what's going on in my life. Uh, got, got the wife some nice stuff. So I'll tell you the story of our Valentine's Day when we have it to encourage you. And uh, feel free to share your stories with us. Uh, as we talk, as always on the show, you're allowed and we <laughs> encourage you to text in. Uh, if you're listening in the radio, 314 Eight eight zero zero eight zero eight is the text line. And if you want to comment during the live stream, which is currently up on Facebook, uh, just search for the new John Simmons show. You'll be able to find that feed if you don't have it or subscribe already. So thanks everybody for joining us today on the program, uh, talking about Olympic records and biblical records. That's the conversation on today's show. Obviously, we've all seen that the the Winter Olympics have started over in uh, Pyeongchang, and uh, a lot of stuff going on over there. Haven't been able to keep up as much as I would like to. I haven't been able to be glued to the TV. One reason is because we don't have cable at the house. Uh, we got to follow along on articles or you know watch stuff after it happens on Hulu or something to the effect. So uh, I'm thankful for the Olympics, though. I'm thankful that we get opportunities to compete and show what we're good at in life and show off our gifts and talents. And, man, these people are impressive people who are able to spend their entire lives or a good portion of it training and preparing for something as you know, specific and focused as an Olympic medal or Olympic event, right? Uh, these people are spending a lot of time even in the winter. I, I, I imagine, and here's my first thought, is that if you're going to pick an Olympics to get ready for, wouldn't you want to get rid of, ready for the summer ones? Man, sign me up for the warm, warm stuff. Now, I'm not a big fan of sweating in the hot sun, but I don't know how I feel about putting on your parka before you get out on the ice, you know, and having to take that thing off is even worse. You see what these people wear in the skating rink or wear what they, you know, these little tight suits they have as they're going down the luge and stuff like that. Man, that's a, ew, those are tight, 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 tight. And it's probably not as warm as I would like it, but the Winter Olympics are in full swing. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I think uh, records are always good to keep. And of course, uh, the Olympics are great obviously a great example of what it's like to keep records. We keep records all the way back to when the game started. We now compare what we've done in certain events and certain categories to what people have done in the past. We have world records we're trying to beat. We have Olympic records that these athletes are trying to do better than the last person. And so every four years we have these contests, whether it's the summer or winter, either way, we're keeping records of it. The first Winter Olympics, by the way, here's some fun facts for you, uh, were held in 1924 in France. And over the years, the Winter Olympics have been filled with uh, incredible athletic feats, all sorts of mishap scandals. We all know that the, you know, like 
the bods the bobsled team the 88 jamaican bobsled team uh, of course inspired the film cool runnings don't forget about the miracle hockey win over canada in 1960 uh, which also spawned its own fair share of movies as well the other thing i want to talk about is uh you know there's been a lot of scandals too Tanya Harding, she's had her own movie, and she was, a, you know, beating up Nancy Kerrigan or having someone beat up Nancy Kerrigan if you, you know, depending on who you talk to about that whole thing. So, uh, but those are not the records we're talking about on tonight's show, although those are great heartwarming stories. Those are great things to consider, or sometimes in the case of Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding, things that we might wish we would forget. And I think that's good about all records. Some records are worth repeating. Some records are not uh, worth uh, talking about again. And here we are talking about records, whether it's an Olympic record. And obviously on this show, our spin on things is being able to see it from God's perspective, to be able to use our lives and what God's given us and the gifts and the talents that he's given us to serve the kingdom in some way, to serve others in some way, and to be able to be excited about what we're doing and let other people see it. So they can also see what Christ is doing through us and in us and want to seek out Christ for themselves. So, the Olympics is what a great example of this. Now, obviously, the, the Olympics aren't Christian in uh, nature. However, I think recording feats and traits and things that have happened obviously are. We've talked about this on many things. Uh, when we talk about God has a sentence for your life on this show, it stems from the fact that we believe that God records lots of things. He's a meticulous record keeper. In fact, uh, on Revelations 20.12, uh, it says that uh, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were open, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. So we see here in Revelations, uh, one verse of many that we'll go over tonight, talking about encouraging you in your walk with Christ, in your life, to see that you know, you're know you made special. I'm not sharing this verse to talk about judgment and damnation. No, I, God loves you. God's given you special gifts and abilities and talents, and he wants you to use them to serve the kingdom and to serve others. And so we see uh, an event or a spectacular Olympic game, and we see the people that have found some of their gifts and been able to harness the goodness of their gift and been able to compete at a level that many of us cannot compete at, and many of the people that they compete at, is such it's such a tight, small group because you have to be the best of the best to make the Olympics, and we get excited by these testimonies, by watching. I mean, that's why everybody sort of glues themselves to the TV when these events are going on, because they're exciting to watch someone who's really figured it out and really understands what they're good at. And it's really not maybe even if they weren't great at it, they they practice really hard and they were able to, over time, figure out how to be the best in that field. And so it's exciting to see people, you know, succeed in areas like this. It's also heartbreaking to see our favorite people sort of fall flat at the end or, or lose by a fraction of a second or a fraction of a score. These testimonies in these Olympic Games are recorded down year after year. And just like our lives, right? God is recording things in our lives. Psalms 56, 8 says this. You keep track of all my sorrows. You collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. He's recording so many things in our lives, even our tears, even the days of our lives, we're going to share a lot of verses about what God records because I want to talk about keeping records. God's keeping records. The Olympics are keeping records. I want to encourage you to realize that your life is worth something. Much like we, you know, we, we get excited for these people who are doing the Olympics and we want to give them gold medals and we want to see them on the cover of our Wheaties boxes. God wants to see you on the cover of magazines and see you on the cover of, even if it's just your family magazine and that you're doing a great thing for your family. God does not necessarily make everybody famous, but God uses people in a special way. And if you're able to figure out God's plan for your life, and we call it God's sentence on this show, you're going to be able to really find satisfaction, joy, and happiness you're going to be able to be excited about tomorrow, much like I figure these Olympic guys are excited about training. I mean, imagine year after year, day after day, and you're practicing hard. You're making sure you watch what you eat. You're going to the the, the ice rink or whatever it have you or the rink or the, the sled, <laughs> whatever you call the big sled thing, or you're putting the skis on, whatever it is, and you're getting ready. And all of a sudden, your time is here. Your time to shine is here. And in our lives, we don't often get the opportunity to know when our time to shine is going to come, we have to sort of just be ready when the time shows up and you become ready 
in your walk with Christ by just being able to walk daily in the gifts that God has given you. So I imagine that even though this is the moment that we're keeping a record of who's going to win and who's the fastest skier and who does the most triple axles and who has the best score and things like that, I bet you they were able to do these things yesterday. But today is just the day that we've decided to watch and, and keep a record of it. And for us who are trying to walk out God's plan for our lives, it's not about, you know, trying to find this one moment in life and making sure that you're, you know, suited up and ready for that one moment, but rather it's, it's being prepared at all times to see what God's going to do through you. Because the day that God really wants to use you to do a mighty thing in the world and to show off your gifts and talents, as the Bible says, your gifts make room for you. And they also bring you before Kings, which means that people are going to notice when you're able to do things well, you know, when you find out what you're gifted and called to do, and you're able to mature in those gifts, people are going to take notice. This is exactly what's happening at the Winter Olympics. People found out they're good at these certain events. They're excited to show off their skills and talents, and now we're recording these things for all to see. Uh, a lot of a lot of records have been kept here at the Olympics. I don't want to really go over all of the records. I'm not a big Winter Olympic guy myself, but one of the things that we're going to talk about here is that I love this idea that the games change because it's such a great example for the variation of the gifts and talents that God gives us all. What I mean is, is that early on when the winter Olympic games started, they didn't look like they now look like we aren't able to see the exact same games. In fact, they've added on many events and disciplines. And so I wanted to go over with you in case you didn't know, fun fact, the original five sports that were included in the very first Winter Olympic Games. I think this is, I found this fascinating. You know, it's it's like we look at the games now and we've sort of, we've grown in our ability to uh, make stuff bigger, right? Everything's so big now. We've got these huge ramps and we've got all of these professionally made skis and skates, things that they weren't working with back in the 20s. And so the games have changed over time. Much like God's plan and our ability to do things differently has changed. There are people in the 1920s who loved God and found God's sentence for their life that were doing things a lot differently than we do them today. Even though is a broad sweeping sentence, you would say that we're all serving God. In the same sentence, you would say all of these people competed in the Olympic Winter Games, but they weren't necessarily the same games. And I like that even though they're different. They're the same. And even though we record what happened and we try to break those records, we also recognize that the records from the old games that aren't played anymore are just sort of going to be frozen in time, right? Those records are just going to be the best records that were ever kept of that particular game. So the original five sports, bobsledding, curling, ice hockey, Nordic skiing, and skating. So we've seen some of those still today, or at least uh, parts of them. Some of them have left and come back, like curling. And Nordic skiing isn't necessarily uh, used anymore. It says that uh, it, it included a discipline of military patrol. I don't think that there's a military patrol skiers being recorded on the Winter Olympics anymore. But uh, we still have the bobsled, still got ice hockey, still got the curling now, and ice skating. So some of these are still around today. We're still watching people do similar things to what they did back in the 20s when this thing started. And it's, I think it's incredibly exciting to think that, man, we're doing the same thing today that they were doing back then. And we're able to see the records of these games and say, man, you know, am I able to skate better or, you know, do more advanced tricks than people who did it 80 years ago? How are we able to compare our lives now and our abilities now to the abilities of people back then. I love the fact that, you know, we think we're so advanced today and that we still can't run faster than somebody from 1920 or we can't jump higher or we can't skate longer or, or things like this. And that people, even in the 1920s, were able to do things better than we were. And I think that often we forget this or, you know, we're not able to humble ourselves and think that that's even possible because we've grown so much as a culture and a, in a people. So I love going over these things. I love reviewing records. I think records are 
just an incredible part of our lives because God is keeping records. He's a, metec- a meticulous record keeper. He's keeping tracks of our idle thoughts, says Matthew 12, 36. He counts every star in the sky, Psalms 147, 4. And he also counts those who fear God, Malachi 3, 16. There's a lot of things God's keeping records of. Are Is he keeping a record of the life you're living for his kingdom? Are you trying to become the best you? Much like the people who are competing in this year's Winter Olympics are trying to be the very best that they can be, trying to be the people who can succeed in this field of whatever their, you know, their, their discipline is, and they're trying to get the gold medal, as you would. And so I'm excited to see if you think that you're serving God's sentence. And if you're not, it's okay, because here's your chance. You know, even though four years ago these people weren't known by us by name, and now here we are able to see the things that people are doing very well, mind you, things that we couldn't do <laughs> just from sitting on the couch. But just four years ago, in the last four years ago, Uh, When they had the last Olympics, there's many people who are competing this year who've never competed before, people who are going to break Olympic records whose names we've never heard before. And much like that, I want to encourage you today to know that God has a plan for your life, that even though maybe four years ago you weren't able to compete in the event that maybe you thought you were supposed to, or maybe you tried to and you didn't quite make it. Well, guess what? Time continues to move on. There continues to be opportunity in life for uh, people to show off and show out is Heather would tell us from Faithfully Fit. And I want to encourage you today that God has a special plan. You are unique. You've been created by God to do good works through Christ Jesus. You are his handiwork. And even better than an Olympic gold medal, God has a special plan for your entire life. So when we come back, we're going to talk about how the body of Christ works together, how it's not all about just recording what the great things we're doing are, but it's also about recording the things we're doing as a people. So the body of Christ is a conversation we come back. Don't go away. You're listening to the new John Simmons show, part of the Testimony House Network. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds, but also wants to see you shed any other weight you've been carrying through Christ. Classes are filling up every morning during the week, so grab your spot in an individual class or an eight-week boot camp. Faithfully Fit offers classes in circuit training, drumstick fusion, cardio, and strength and personal training. Classes start at just 5 bucks, and the eight-week boot camp starts at 75 But wait, as a listener of the new John Simmons Show, Faithfully Fit is offering you a buy one, get one free boot camp when you mention this ad when signing up. That's two camps for the price of one. You can bring a friend, split the cost, or have your second camp for free. Either way, this is a special offer only for show listeners. Sign up today by calling 314-239-4149 or visit faithfully.fit for more information. Faithfully Fit can also hold classes at your church or school. Don't delay. Contact Faithfully Fit, where they hope to strengthen your body and your relationship with Christ. Call 314-239-4149. This is St. Louis Baseball Weekly. We're going to try to find a, a more impactful bat for the lineup, and we're also going to look at some...
Nine FM. Want to start writing or add to God's sentence for your life? Want to learn what that means? Visit newjohnsimmons.com for articles and videos that can help you find a future and a hope for your life today. Now, back to the New John Simmons Show. Welcome back. It's the new John Simmons Show. We're streaming live on Facebook if you want to become connected with the show. Lots of ways to do it via social media in a brand new YouTube page, which just got posted uh, just a couple weeks ago. We've been adding new content to it regularly. So there's lots of ways to stay connected with the show as we begin to grow. I mean, we started this thing back in September of last year, and we're now in February, almost six months now we've been doing the show. Very excited to continue to grow with you, continue to teach this idea of God has a sentence, and continue to hopefully talk about engaging conversations with you as you begin to uh, communicate back, and we begin to build sort of a community of conversation and people who are really following God's plan and trying to be uh, working together and hold each other up and and really just be fellowshipping with one another. And social media is just a great tool for that. So if you want to get connected with the show, if you're not already, all you have to do is head over to Facebook and look for the new John Simmons show. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at new John Simmons. Uh, the links are posted on our website as well, newjohnsimmons.com. And of course, if you want to visit our YouTube page and see all the live stream, the past episodes of the live stream, or you can see some of the, the pre-made videos that we put up as well. All you got to do is search for the new John Simmons show on YouTube. So, before we left, we were talking about Olympic records, talking about all the different things that the Winter Olympics that are different now. So uh, when they first started, they were doing bobsledding and curling. Some ice hockey was in there, some skiing and some skating. And now we have a multitude of different events, including luge, freestyle skiing, skeleton, snowboarding. Snowboarding was just, you know, sort of invented in the last 20, 30 years or whatever it was when it got started. It makes me feel old when I think of when it really was, because I feel like I was a kid when it was invented, and I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever, and now it's been around a long time, and so it's not as new anymore. Uh, dates me a little bit, but I'm bringing this up because the games keep changing. Uh, the things that we keep records of now and the best of and the gold medals, the, when the Winter Olympics started in 1924, they look differently now. The events are different. I mean, we still do it every four years. We're still doing it against other nations. So there are similarities in the Olympic Games, but the records that are being kept, uh, some of the games we don't keep records for anymore. Those are sort of frozen in time. And some of the things uh, we have to keep new records for. You know, we have to start and figure out what the world record for an event is going to be because this is the, you know, the first year of this particular event. And I'm bringing this up because I want to be able to talk about comparing sort of Olympic records and against biblical records. Here's what I mean is obviously these two things aren't related necessarily, but we keep records in both places, right? We keep Olympic records and we also keep biblical records. We've shared many verses on how God is a meticulous record keeper. He counts the hairs on our head, the number of our days, and those things change every day. We're going to live less tomorrow than we did today. We have hairs fall out in the shower and some people just uh, lose it a little faster than others. <laughs> So if God's counting those things and those numbers change, it, it really shows that God has a very personal view of our life for people who think, well, God's really not paying attention to me much. He's keeping such good track of you that he knows how many hairs are in your head right now and right now. And if you cut your hair right now, he would know how many hairs are left. Like that's, that's a really impressive record keeping. That is as good as any accountant that we'll ever meet. And so we keep different records of different events in the Olympics, and God's keeping different records of our, our lives. But what the difference is, is that when we keep Olympic records, we're, we're sort of comparing who's the best. Who is the best person at this particular game? Who's the best person at this event? And it may necess not necessarily be the person who's trained the most or the person with the most name recognition. It might just be the person who was the best that day. So we keep track of the winners of those events, but we don't often remember the second or the third place person down the road, although they are just as good in many aspects of the game, if not able to beat the gold medalist on days of the week besides the one we recorded at the Olympics. But we keep records of who's done the best, and this is not done in the body of Christ. 
This is not how God keeps records. He keeps lots of records, including the ones we've mentioned, but he's also keeping a record of what we do with our life. Everything we do from our idle thoughts to the days of our lives are being recorded. Psalms 139.16 says, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. God knew your life before you did. God knew your life before your parents dreamed it up. God knew your life before you figured out what to do with your career, with your family, with your school. (laughs) Excuse me. God knew before you did. And he wrote it down in a book. This is what the Bible says. I'm not making this up. Read it for yourself. But what God recorded was not that everybody's trying to be the winner. He's not looking for gold medal Christians. He's not looking for the best of the best. He's looking for all of us to participate. Now, we're not doing it to get a participation trophy and just everybody wins. No, this is the idea is that we're all created to do different things. 1 Corinthians 12, starting in 12, says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. Because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less part of the body, nor should the ear say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. This story that Corinthians tells, or this this analogy of the body of Christ being the arm is no different or less important than the leg, or the eye is no less important than the nose. Although they're all doing different things, and they're all seen differently, and they're all shaped differently. They are not any less important than the other because without one, all of the rest become less capable. And so we as believers, as we're walking out God's sentence for our life, have to understand that the sum of what God wants us to do for the kingdom is all about using our lives collectively. So it's about lifting each other up. It's about encouraging your children, your friends, your coworkers to find, to chase after what God has for them so that all of us as believers can really be effective gold medal Christians, you know, so we can all work together to get this medal. And it's not about just being the best Christian and being recognized as, well, I'm no Billy Graham, so my life must not matter. No, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. God has a different plan for all of us. The gifts and talents that you have, are going to be just as good as the gifts and talents that Billy Graham have. They're just going to be used maybe in a different way. God may have called you to ministry, but he may have called you to lead millions of people to Christ through a television show or to fill stadiums. But God may have called you to save and share the gospel with your family or uh, one person at your job, or maybe just be able to bless someone along the way who really needed a blessing and that helped them find Christ. Your plan is unique to you. Hebrew, Ephesians 2.10 says that you were created by God, you were his handiwork. And just like we have a tool like a hammer and a screwdriver, all of these things are different tools. We have saws and we have all sorts of different tools. Sometimes a job needs one tool, sometimes it needs 12 tools to get accomplished correctly. And this is another example of what the body of Christ looks like. Understanding your purpose understanding why you're here can help set you free. And when we see the Olympics and we see people who are able to understand where they're great and where they're really gifted allows them to focus their ability and their attention on that thing. We don't see Michael Phelps, the world's uh, arguably the world's greatest swimmer, you know, 20 something gold medals or 20 something medals in the summer Olympics. We don't see him putting on the bobsled suit and running down the track. We don't see Usain Bolt, you know, trying to put on the skates. We don't see Nancy Kerrigan putting, you know, going to get in the pool because they're not good at those things in a way that's effective to be a gold medal winner. But yet when they found what they were good at, whether it was hockey or skating or swimming or running, they focused on that thing. And it allowed them to, allowed their gifts to make room for them, as the Bible says, allowed their gifts to bring them in front of kings. This is what the Bible says happens when we 
start to mature and walk in the gifts that God's given us. And he's given all of us gifts. Romans 12 talks that all of us have a motivational gift, not to mention the other spiritual gifts that are listed listed in other places in the Bible. God has created us specifically to be a leader or a server or a teacher or a giver or an administrator or a comforter. These are gifts that God's given you. One of these gifts is your gift. And when you understand what your gift is and how to find it, if you don't know what your gift is, I think you should try and figure that out. And I say the best place to start, the place that I started was when I was given the resource Discovering Your God-Given Gifts, and <laughs> not a, a very on-the-nose title. It was written by Don and Katie Fortune. These guys spent decades in the 70s and the 80s putting together this incredible resource that translates uh, the seven gifts that are listed in Romans 12 and sort of does this expandive research on what each gift is, the type of person who exhibits each gift, and then they also give tests on how you can find what your gift is. You can take this 20 question quiz and it's not a, you know, it's not a failing quiz. You can't get it wrong. It'll ask you questions like, do you, would you rather spend time by yourself or with a group of people? Would you rather, you know, read your Bible all night or does reading sort of turn you off? Would you rather, you know, uh, throw a party or go to a party? These are the types of questions that could be in this survey. And once you finish the survey, you're going to realize that you score higher in one area and lower in others. And what it does, it sort of guides you into a, 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 your mind frame because our DNA is all different, right? We all see the world differently. We all have different hair color and skin color. We all have different likes and dislikes. Me and my brother have the same skin color, but we don't like the same pizza toppings or the same movies because our DNA has been put inside of us so that we could see the world differently. And I believe God did this did this because he's also put our gifts, our talents, the reason that we live in a certain place that we live in, the reason that we're the, the right height that we are and the reason that we think the way we do and speak the way we do are all because it's associated with the plans that God has for our lives. And he's keeping records of what we're doing. Every idle thought, everything that we're doing is being recorded. So I want to encourage you to, today this is your chance here in the new year. We've talked about this all January. New year, new you. This is the chance for you to start finding and discovering God's plan for your life. Find God's sentence for your life. Discover the gifts and talents that he has for you. Don and Katie Fortune, go look that book up. Discovering God's gifts. Discovering your God-given gifts. This book can absolutely transform your life. When I found out that I was a perceiver, which is the gift that I have listed, I found out why I thought the way that I did. I have a very unempathetic uh, sort of demeanor sometimes. I, I try it because Christ has molded me, and I try to walk more like Christ has taught me than I want to naturally. But I, I'm unempathetic. I see things in black and white, sort of. I'm, I'm less gray. I'm less like, oh, I sort of get it. No, I'm more like, no, I don't get it, or I absolutely get it. That's sort of where my demeanor is, and it's allows me as a minister of the gospel to sort of see, okay, this is what God says. This is what I need to do. This is what God's word says I need to tell other people, and this is what I'm going to tell them, and this is how I'm going to act in life, and uh, this is why I see things in black and white. It helped me realize why I saw the world the way that I did. And when you realize why you are the way that you are, it really lets you realize why God made you a certain way, and it sort of it, it makes you thankful that God thought you were important enough and God thought you were special enough to make a certain way. I mean, it really gives light. It really gives substance to this idea that you are God's handiwork. Like when you realize, oh my gosh, God, God made me this way for a reason. Don't I, why, why did he make me like this? Why did God make me a server? Why did God give me this heart to want to really help other people by giving my money and my resources and helping them get money and resources from other places? Why did God make me a person that loves to organize? Why did God make me a person who is like, gifted to lead other people and be able to facilitate conversations. Why did God make me this type of person? The Olympics are a great example of people who have latched on to something they are good at and been able to focus their lives around it. Are you focusing your life around something that God has given you? Because it'll set you free. It'll bring you before Kings. It'll allow you to be seen by the world in a new light. 
and even if you feel like, well, it's too late for me, it's, you know, it's, I'm too old or I already missed my boat. I'm, I'm too much in school debt. I picked the wrong degree. I'm at a job I don't like. Listen, all of those things can change overnight. David was a shepherd in a field and then he was king of, of Israel. You know, things change. Things change in your life. Look at the Olympics as an example. The person who won the gold medal four years ago may not be the person who wins it this year. They may not even be competing, and there's brand new people competing every year. And I love that the events change because the things that we do for God are going to be different today than they were 20 years ago or 40 years ago because God continues over time to shape us in whatever way we need to be shaped, in whatever culture we're going to be living in, in whatever you know, opportunities we're going to have in front of us. You know, there may not have been a gift of speaking on the radio or a gift of, you know, being able to teach other people to exercise really well or even a need for it back in the day when we weren't, you know, most of the America wasn't obese. You know, these types of things weren't happening back in the day. But now there's reasons to have ministries like Faithfully Fit that we promote here on the show or opportunities for you to do things with social media or at a church video team or be able to do things differently than what people were doing years ago. And so opportunities continue to change. The Olympics are keeping records of people who are doing great things in those particular fields. And God has a record of your life. And are you trying to find God's sentence for your life? If you don't know how to find it, it starts with getting to know Christ as your Lord and Savior, believing and putting trust in him that he is the man who died on the cross for your sins, and he paid the ultimate price for the sins. And when you realize that Christ is your Lord and Savior, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says your old life can stop and your new life begins. Do you want to find your new life in Christ? Do you want to find God's sentence for your life? When we come back, we'll talk about how you can do it, what the plans God is has for your future can absolutely transform not only your life, but the legacy of the people who surround your life, your kids, your coworkers, your friends. Your sentence isn't just about you. Don't go away. You're listening to the new John Simmons show, part of the Testimony House Network. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds, but also wants to see you shed any other weight you've been carrying through Christ. Classes are filling up every morning during the week, so grab your spot in an individual class or an eight-week boot camp. Faithfully Fit offers classes in circuit training, drumstick fusion, cardio, and strength and personal training. Classes start at just 5 bucks, and the eight-week boot camp starts at 75 But wait, as a listener of the new John Simmons Show, Faithfully Fit is offering you a buy one, get one free boot camp when you mention this ad when signing up. That's two camps for the price of one. You can bring a friend, split the cost, or have your second camp for free. Either way, this is a special offer only for show listeners. Sign up today by calling 314-239-4149 or visit faithfully.fit for more information. Faithfully Fit can also hold classes at your church or school. Don't delay. Contact Faithfully Fit where they hope to strengthen your body and your relationship with Christ. Call 314-239-4149.
106.9 FM. The new John Simmons Show is part of the Testimony House Network. To learn more about the network or to watch other network programs, please visit TestimonyHouse.org. Now, here's the new John Simmons. Because you call me out from the grave. Love this song, Live Like I Have Been Changed. The idea of God changes us. He doesn't just keep us the same as we used to be. You're listening to the new John Simmons show. It's part of the Testimony House Network. If you'd like to stay connected with the show, all you gotta do is head over to Facebook, look for the new John Simmons. If you want to read some testimonies of my old life, we also have a copy of Finding Faith for You over at newjohnsimmons.com. Just visit the store page. Talking about Olympic records this evening, talking about how we can be used by God in a special way, just like we keep records of Olympic winners and gold medalists and silver medalists because they've done great things. God's keeping records of our life. Now, he's keeping a record of your life, whether you're doing good things or not. And what we want to have is a record of doing good things for the Lord. Hebrews 11.2 says that our testimonies are recorded when we walk out in faith. So using our faith-filled testimonies, our faith in Christ, our testimonies are recorded. And what are they recorded for? And how do we find God's sentence for our life? That's what I said we would talk about in this segment. How do you find God's sentence for our life? Well, we teach here on the show, and what God's shown me, and we use scripture to back up all these points, is that if you take these three steps and you apply them to your life, you will find yourself in a place where you weren't before, a place where you're walking out God's specific unique plan for your life, doing the things that you were made to do, following after the path and the plans that God created for you to do, and serving other people in a way you never thought possible, serving with a heart you never thought possible, living a new life worth living, worth waking up for, where you're not worried about your circumstances or your past or where you've come from or the problems you are currently facing, but you're keeping your eyes fixated on Christ. We teach that first you have to know Christ. <laughs> that's the that's the linchpin. You can't find God's sentence without knowing Christ because Ephesians 2 says 2:10 says that we are created by God. We are his handiwork. However, we were created to do good works through Christ Jesus. So in order to do those good works that God created us for, we first have to go through Christ Jesus. So that's the that's the prerequisite to finding God's plan for your life. What do you do next? Well, we teach that you need to find passion. Passion is this idea that you need to develop a relationship for God. Uh, you've heard of the passion of the Christ? That is because God had so much love, and that's what passion is. Passion is a strong emotion. Passion is the ability to uh, do God's will above our own will. We see that right before Christ went to the cross, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed three times. Three separate times the exact same thing, that he prayed for God to take the cup of suffering away from him, meaning that is there any way he could not be crucified? Three times he prays this. Three times the perfect human of Jesus, who was also God, prayed, is there any other way? But he also included in his prayers, I don't want to do what I want to do. I want to do what you want me to do, Lord. So if there is no other way, I will do this. And and God's will was him for to him to be crucified for our sins. And so Jesus went through with these things, and his testimony that's recorded is now called the Passion of the Christ. In fact, if you look in any dictionary, not just a biblical one, if you look in a dictionary and you look up the word passion, you're going to find a definition. One of them is going to be associated with the suffering of cross at the Christ, or the suffering of Christ at the cross, I should say. The passion of the Christ, the crucifixion story of Christ is going to be in the definition. Christ had so much passion that they defined the word after him. In fact, another story about the passion of the Christ is called the greatest story ever told. And when we hear this idea of the greatest story ever told, we think about what Christ did on the cross. So we teach that the first step to finding God's perfect plan for your life, much like Christ's plan was, God had a plan for Christ just like he does for us to find the greatest story ever told in your life 
You need to find passion just like Christ did. We're just following the example Christ set for us. We're not stepping out in some new way. We're not doing some new age thing. We're saying, what did God do and how do we do it? God grew close close to Christ and then he did what God asked of him. And we got to find passion in order to do that. Next, we teach that you need to find vision. And even Christ had a vision from God. Luke 2.49 says that even as a young boy, Christ was in the in the church teaching other people and saying, I know what God has for me. I know about my father's business. I know what God's plans for my life are. So even you today, and we see this in other people throughout the Bible, not just Christ, that God calls people out. He says, okay, I need you to be king. I need you to help the spies. I need you to be a minister of the gospel. I need you to go collect the fish. I need you to go do this. I need you to go do that. We all have these different Stories in the Bible of all these people who are called to do different things, not all of them the same, not all of them as exciting or as important, you know, in the natural as the next one. But all of them were ideas that God had given them. And all the people in the Bible who did did things for Christ were able to do them because they knew Christ. Noah had a vision to build a boat. Abraham had a vision to go to a place where God would send him. You know, even Paul had a vision that he would share the gospel with the Gentiles. People walk in vision. People walk with a plan. So if you don't have a plan in your life for where you see your future headed in Christ and where Christ wants you to go, how is your record going to be written? What record are you getting written right now? Is it the record of, hey, this is what I decided to do with my life, God. I didn't care about the gifts you've given me. I didn't care about you know the plans that you had for me. I didn't really care about serving other people. I didn't really care about serving anyone except myself. Obviously, I love my family and I took care of them. But I didn't care about using my gifts and talents to serve you and the person who created me and the person who's given me life and helps me flee from sin. We want to keep a record, not because we have to. I mean, don't wouldn't. You want to? I mean, I, I use this. I've used this story before, and I think it's so poignant. It's so to the point. It, get, it gets my heart, at least. If if we were oh, if we were at war, if we were in the military, if we were in the army, and uh, one of our brothers, our soldier brothers, died for us on the battlefield, took a bullet for us, and he died in our place, we would come back from that overseas mission, and we would go talk to his family, and we would want to take care of his family. And we would want to put a ribbon up and we'd want to memorialize him. And we'd send, you know, we'd have remembrances of him for years to come. And we've seen this in real life. This isn't just a fictional story. Things like this have happened where buddies in the army have seen their best friends die right in front of them. And some of them have died because they took it upon themselves to die for the safety of others. And when we come home, we give these men posthumous medals and we think about them constantly and we put their names on statues and we, you know, we take care of their, their families for years to come. It's a really big deal if someone dies for you. But didn't Christ die for us all? We don't often treat Christ the same way we would treat someone who died for us on the battlefield. Yet Christ did die for you and for me. Shouldn't we want to take care of his family and and think about him constantly and put his name on buildings and and talk about him and want to do nice things for, you know, to to not be, oh, you wouldn't want to live a life where he might as well let me die. No, you want to make sure your life is meaningful, that you lived for a reason and that this person didn't give their life for you for no reason. God has a plan for you. It's unique. It's special. It'll bring great joy and satisfaction to your life. Psalms 116, talking about the pleasure of God is to serve his will. The pleasure in your life comes when you serve God's will. That's incredible to think that joy, satisfaction, and hope. In fact, Romans 15, 13 says that if you put your trust in Christ, and this is the third step, faith, putting your faith in Christ, it allows your life to overflow with joy, peace, and and hope. So not only does God have a plan for your life, that he wants to use your gifts and talents, that he wants to draw closer to you and have a relationship with you that's much more intimate than the one you may have with him currently. You know, just like we have a relationship with a a spouse or a girlfriend, a new boyfriend, and we barely know them the first date we, we go out with them. 
but by the hundredth date or the tenth year, or maybe the twentieth year of marriage, or maybe even just the first year, we know so much about that person. We know all about what makes them tick. We know what they like to watch and eat. We know what they like to do. And this is the relationship God wants with us. He already knows all of these things about us, but he wants us to know it about him and get to know him and draw closer to him. And just like in an intimate relationship, when you talk to someone and you talk to them intimately and you want to share your secrets with them and share your heart with them, and then they talk back and you can hear them even in a whisper. God's word says that he speaks to us in a whisper. And you've got to be able to get close to someone to hear that whisper and It says, if we hear God's voice, we should aim to follow it. So where are you following it? Are you following it down your own plan or following it down the plan that God has for you? So the three steps we teach to find God's sentence or plans for your life, find passion for God, being able to do his will above your own, find a vision from God, being able to see your future in Christ and not being able to look at your past or your current situation and say, oh, there's no way my life will ever get better. Ultimately, even if you can't figure out the vision for your career, your life, your family, your school, know that your vision from Christ is to live eternally in heaven. So at least if anything, if that's all you have to hold on to today, the only vision you have is I will live eternally in heaven. That's a pretty good vision to have. Now, that's not the vision for God's sentence for your life, but that's a pretty good vision to hold on to and put some hope in your heart today. And ultimately finding faith, finding the ability to walk out the life that God has for you. If you want to have a recorded sentence from God, Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run, just like the Olympics, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So even though this isn't about the Olympics versus the biblical records, God keeps records of the race we're running. And he's marked it out specifically for us. And the race that he's marked out for us, if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2 said, who is the perfecter of our what? Our faith will be able to go far and not grow weary and lose heart. And without Christ, it's hard to not, you know, be be frustrated and hurt and angry at what's going on in your life and not know what's going to happen tomorrow and be frustrated about what is the plan for your life? But anyway, so God has a special, unique plan. We've got to wrap up here to the show tonight. God has a plan for you. Find passion, vision, and faith. We'll continue to talk about this as the weeks go on. Very excited to share this new year with you. It's going to be a new you. If you commit your life to Christ, trust in him and he will act. And he will, the, the Bible says, Psalm 37, he will grant you the desires of your heart. And the desires your the desire of your heart is to find God's sentence for your life. You will find it. That's going to do it for tonight's show. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Don't forget to head over to YouTube, the New John Simmons Show channel, and also stream live, Facebook Live, the New John Simmons Show. We will see you next time. I pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today. Thanks for listening to the New John Simmons Show.